In this step and the next step, we're going to be creating some more objects to go on the table, but we're going to be looking at a slightly different approach to modeling, and that will be through using NURBS curves and surfaces. And we'll get on to what those are all about shortly. First of all, though, I just want to do something with the candle so it's not in the way whilst we build our candle holder. So let's just turn back on the furniture. I'm going to click on a piece of my candle and press up on my keyboard to select the whole thing. And just for now, I'm going to pop it out of the way. I'll scale it down a little bit as well, because why wouldn't you? And we'll just leave that there for now. And we'll just add it to the furniture layer. So I'll right click on my furniture layer and add selected objects so that I can hide it. OK, let's have a look at how we're going to model our candlestick holder. So I want to be in either my front or side view for this. I'm going to go for front and let's find the center of my grid here. And what I'm going to do, this is a really clever little trick, it's called revolve. So I just need to kind of draw one half of the silhouette and then Maya's magic is going to do the rest. So I'll give you an example of what I mean. So let's just go to create and we can see here there are curve tools and I'm going to be using the CV curve tool for this. And for this, we're going to create kind of a candle stick holder. I think that's what they're called. I don't know, but I'll start down at the bottom. So I'm just going to do something like this and I'm going to keep my clicks quite close together and this will look like a messy curve by the time I'm done, but you'll be surprised at how forgiving the results are. So I'm going to do something like that and then go up to that shape there and then we'll come out a little bit and back in a little bit more. Then we'll go up like that. We'll come out again a little bit and then out for the top, something like that. And then when you're done, press enter. And this gives us a curve and you can see that I've got a bit of an outline and this you have to imagine this is going to be mirrored on the other side and then the revolve tool is going to fill it in for us. And again, it looks very messy, but generally this technique is quite forgiving of the messier curves. In order to get this to work, then what we're going to do next is go to surfaces. So we're still in our modeling menu. We'll go to surfaces and there is this little thing here called revolve. First thing I'd recommend doing is just try clicking on it and seeing if it works. And in my case, it does. But if it doesn't, just go to surfaces, revolve, click on the little options, and you might just need to change the axis preset if it's doing it in the wrong direction. But as I've already shown, in my case, Y is the correct direction. So we'll just click on revolve. And if I deselect that to have a look at the overall shape, you can see that it's all those unneat imperfections that make this look like quite a detailed shape. So now you just imagine our little candle sitting atop this. It's going to look pretty cool, right? With a nice sort of brassy, coppery, goldy sort of metallic texture on here. It's going to be the bomb. But this is not finished. I generally work with polygon modeling because I might want to take it into a game engine, which don't really accept NURBS models. So I'm going to convert this to a polygon model, first of all. So I'll come back into my perspective view. Just click on the NURBS shape. I don't need to rename it yet because I'll be deleting this in a sec. This is just like a starting point. So with it selected, I'm now going to go to Modify. Near the bottom is Convert, and you can convert any NURBS shape to a polygon shape, and it will just do this automatically. We don't really need to worry about the settings for it. So I've clicked that, and then what I will do is just with my Move tool, move it to the side. So this is now our candle holder shape. This was just what we used to get started. So I can delete the curve and the NURB shape. They have served their purpose. Now what I want to do is just put this back to center. So I'll just zero those out. And at this stage, the mesh is quite difficult to work with because it's mostly triangulated uh, and it's quite uneven. What we really want is something that is a bit more even and quadrangulated. So back into the square sort of mesh that we've been using. And luckily, since about Maya 2019, actually it might be new in this version, it might be Maya 2020, there is this new tool which will just do that automatically. It lives in Mesh, and it's called Retopologize. And you can go into the settings and try and tweak them, but I think the default settings should be fine for this, so we'll just click on Retopologize. It will take a couple of seconds, but then you can see that it has created 
the same shape for us but using quads. We might have lost a little bit of detail but I'm fairly happy with that result. So at this stage then there are only really two more things that we need to do to finish this off and that is to fill the hole in the top and the bottom. We've had a look at the fill hole tool previously, you could use that again, uh, but in this case I'm going to show you a different way which gives you better topology because your edge flow keeps going. So we're going to put this into edge mode. I'm going to, oh it looks like I've still got my soft select tool turned on so I'll hit B on my keyboard to turn that off and then double click on the top edge. That will select all the way around. Then what I want to do is extrude that so I'll do control and E and that has just highlighted an issue for me. Every time I do something, it's going to retopologize it, which I don't want. So I'm going to undo that. It will retopologize again. But before I do anything else to this shape, I want to delete the history to stop it from doing that. Because this poly retopo in the inputs there is going to make it take ages every time we make a change. So we're just going to go to edit, delete by type, history. That removes that and it means that when we make any further changes that won't be an issue so let's now go back into edge mode double click the top edge and we'll do extrude there we go i now want to bring these in together so trying to use these tools such as the offset is not going to work because of the direction that the normals are facing so we need to switch to our general scale tool and we'll just scale it into the middle you can see that if we go all the way to the center that will seal the hole but I don't want to go all the way to the center. I want to leave a space to show you how I'm going to seal this properly. This is going to be completely watertight. So with that edge row there still selected, I'm going to convert to that selection to vertices. And we can do that by going into select. You can then go to convert selection to vertices. And it'll change that edge selection into a vertex selection, which is half the job done. Then what we will do is go into edit mesh and there's an option to merge to center. And that now has taken all those vertices and merged them into one, which is the same sort of setup that you would get on top of a cylinder. So that then is perfect. And then we just repeat that on the bottom. So edge mode, double click, extrude, scale tool, scale in a bit, select, convert selection to vertices, edit mesh, and merge to center. And that is our candlestick holder thing created. I think actually this edge on the top is too sharp. I'm not a fan of that. So I'll click on that edge and we'll just put a little bevel on it. So I'll give it a few sections and we'll just knock the fraction down to about 0 0.2. Yeah, that's better. Okay, let's rename it. And then we'll make it part of the overall table layer. So we just need to bring that layer back. Oh, we're obviously going to need to scale this holder down a little bit. So let's bring the size down. We'll drop it somewhere near our table. We can position this all a little bit better later. So I still think that's too big. Let's bring that down a little bit. That's better. Then we will get our little candle. Press up on the group to make it all move together. And then we need to just put that on top. So just to get this lined up a little bit, I'm going to use my top view. There we go. And to get the height correct, I'll use side or front view. So we can see that's a little bit above, so we'll just drop it down. Lovely job. Okay, I'm not ever so happy with the proportions. The candle looks too fat for the holder. So I'm going to bring that down to something like that. I think that looks nice. And now I want the candlestick to be part of the candle group. So in order to do that, I will open my outliner. Windows, outliner. There's my candle holder. And what I'm going to do to add it to the group is with my middle mouse button, I'm going to click and drag onto the candle group and release. And that's now all part of the same group. So at any point I select that whole group, it will all move together. And we will just place this to one corner of the table. I want to get the height right now. There we go. 
and then I'm going to duplicate that so that we've got two candles in our scene. So control D and we'll put the other one over here and I'm just going to bring it this way a bit so that it doesn't look too perfect. There we go. This is starting to come together. That's this step complete then. In the next step, we're going to be using curves and nerves again to create a opened out scroll that our sorcerer might be reading from or writing on. So I will see you in the next step for that. Game Dev Academy is graciously supported by these absolute legends. If you'd like to offer your support, then check out our Patreon page using the link in the description below.